Hi, good morning. It's David Rizzo uh, with Rogers Gardens, and today we're going to be talking about the checklist for May. So I'm going to be going over a lot of what we're planting this month, how we're feeding, um, trimming. It's a big month for plants because everything comes available right now and fertilizing, and so I'm going to go through. And if you guys have any questions, we're going to save the questions um, for the end. So because I have a lot of material to cover. I have um, and so, yeah, and so let's start. So the first thing I'm gonna start and talk about is um, we're really going in, like as, as we start, we're still a little cooler. I'm gonna take off my glasses. They're fogging up a little bit. So as we go more into um, later part of May and even into um, June, we start transitioning to the warmer season flowers. And that, that holds true for flowers, that holds true for vegetables and herbs and a lot of other stuff. But the first thing I'm gonna go over is annuals. So the annuals right now, I'm still planting um, the alyssum, the sweet alyssum I'm still doing, full sun, nice little uh, ground cover. And a lot of your annuals right now should give you about four months. We're starting to get more summer annuals right now too. So that's a little bit different. So the alyssum I'm getting in, um, the petunias should last another couple months. When it gets hot, they might slow down. Another good one to plant, um, lobelia. Lobelia is really good. Now on the coast, lobelia will handle full sun. Um, inland, more shade, but great little plant put in containers. Uh, there's a blue, there's a white. Um, the other annuals we're gonna be planting, the zinnias, like the profusion zinnias, there's orange, there's reds. Um, then you get into the bigger um, varieties of zinnias, like the, the, uh, the, the larger head varieties, like the short stuff. Uh, those are a good annual for full sun. Um, Cosmos are full sun, and there's so many other ones. I didn't really pull all of them, but um, there's salvias, there's more gomfrinas, there's so much dianthus, so there's a lot of stuff that's coming in, but now is the time to plant it. So we're sort of done with a lot of the early spring stuff, and now we're moving into more of the summer stuff. And even uh, vinca, vinca I do treat as an annual, even though it, is, it, it can be more of a perennial, so the little vincas take a lot of heat. Um, not too bad with water, keep them a little on the drier side, so that's a good one. Um, and then I, t I like to talk about the shade annuals. So these are annuals that would need morning sun and afternoon shade. Like your impatience are a good one um, that will take two to three hours a morning and then shade the rest of the day. And I didn't pull any begonias, but you got begonias up there. Um, coleus is a good annual for the summer and shade as a foliage plant. So you can see like I picked out a lime green variety. There's different colors. This one is called campfire. Uh, there's some darker red ones that almost have that red velvet. And so they're good to plant right now for shade. And so that's really with the annuals. And with the annuals, what you always want to do, um, deadheading them, that's the most important thing with reblooming. Like see these flowers in the middle are really gone. So when they, when they, when they give you the term of deadheading, you're taking off spent flowers so they keep on flowering because if I was to leave this flower, it's gonna to try to turn into a seed and ripen a seed and will slow down the new buds that are down here. So even what I'll do is I'll take my little scissors and I don't know if you can see this, I'll try to bend one back. And then what I do is I'll just reach down and, and clip it. And what you'll see, most flowers always produce in threes. And so the two new ones on the outside, I don't clip, but the middle one I prune out. So yeah, so that's deadheading the cosmos, and you can do that with zinnias. You always want to get really closer to the um, leaves because then the nutrients don't push up to that stem still. Some people I know like to clip right under a flower. I like to clip down right where it comes out of the stem, so then it keeps on pushing that growth to the sides. Like you can see this zinnia right here. See, these sides are going to bloom eventually, so when I cut the middle out, then these are going to take off. And with fertilizing a lot of the annuals, um, basic, you know, I, I, I don't really use a lot of different fertilizers when I feed. Um, even with a, a lot of things, anything that blooms, I'm just using the, the, the down-to-earth rose food, you know, on everything. On roses, on perennials, on annuals. I like to put it down before I start amending them, before I start planting them. So that's, a, that's the, the, the checklist of the annuals. So very fast, heavy feeders, um, trim off the dead flowers, um, and then really watch where you're putting them. Are you, are you doing more sun annuals? Are you doing more shade annuals? So that's what you get your most out of them. And prepping the soil does help too, but sun and then water and feed. That's the most important thing. And um, going into the next thing on our checklist, um, 
is perennials. So right now, we're going into our perennials. So we have so many perennials. And if you look out in the nursery right now, April and then May, May really, this month, is the biggest time to do perennials. So you're really looking at, if you want any perennials from, we bring in Annie's annuals, we're bringing salvias. And so I pulled a lot of perennials because I, I use perennials as a backdrop. And so I might use some of these annuals in front, but I love perennials because perennials are going to keep on coming back. They might last a year, they might last six years, but the one thing is they last more than a year. And so let me turn my radio off though. I got my radio on, sorry guys. <laughs> but, but back to perennials. So some of my favorite perennials that I like is I like Mystic Spire Salvia. This is a really good one. I like the, um, the Skyscraper which is a really good one too, like that one. Um, you have penstemons that are really good. They're gonna start coming in. So some of the penstemons, some are, are, are garden varieties. There's a few natives I'll talk about later. Uh, Shasta daisies, Shasta daisies are good right now, perennial. Um, another one of my favorites is I love Gara. Gara is a really good one. And a lot of these are bee friendly. So salvias especially, hummingbirds and the bees. Um, and then the Gara, the bees love them. Uh, another little one that I like that hummingbirds really like, it's called um, Agastache or Hummingbird Mint. This is a great little perennial that gets little yellow, peach, or pink flowers, and it has a real aromatic smell. And this is a good one for hummingbirds, like that for hummingbirds. When you get into doing for bees, um, bees like more of an open flower. So like, even like some of the, these perennials, like this is a hybrid between sunflowers and the native sunflower, Helianthus. And so this is a Sun Unbelievables. This is a good one to use. Um, you go into um, the Pentas, the star cluster flower. And the one thing with these, these are just gonna, they're just going into their season. So now we're starting to carry them. They're gonna flower May, June, July, August. And by September, late, into October, that's when you'll you'll light cl uh, clip them down because these are heat lovers. So all these summer uh, perennials are really the heat lovers. So even when you're when you're trimming those, again, like you'll see like the long stalk, and I'll trim back. Sometimes I won't go first set of leaves. I'll go down to the second set of leaves because that way they'll branch better and the flower stalks will be stronger. So really good. Um, not heavy, heavy feeders. Sometimes with the with perennials, sometimes I'll do a spring. I'll do like now and I'll do a fall. So not as heavy feeders. Annuals are heavy. Perennials are more moderate. And again, I can use the rose, the, uh, the down to earth rose food. Uh, another one that I like, I use a lot is all purpose. You know, all purpose is a good one, but not a, not that heavy on the feeding side. But at least three times a year, a spring, like later spring, almost summer, and then a fall. So that's um, with perennials. And the one thing too, um, going into the there's so many different varieties. So you go into the sun perennials and you go into the shade perennials. So I talked a lot about the sun perennials that need about six to eight hours of sun. You go into some of the shade perennials, like this little fuchsia would be considered a shade perennial. This is a dwarf variety that's only going to get about six to ten inches tall. It's going to bloom all summer long, and then when it's done in fall, you'll cut it back. Um, feed them consistently, probably a little heavy feeder. Um, where's the other? I have some other ones. Let me, I'm going to go off screen. This is, a, I want to bring this one over. This is another really good shade perennial right here. It's called heliotrope or heliotrophic. These things are so great. They have more of a vanilla smell, like the, the fragrance on the flower is so great. They'll take heavy, heavy shade. So that's a good one for shade. And there's a lot of other perennials that you can use for shade. Um, you go into some of the azaleas and you go into some of the other plants like that, but definitely planting them now. You know, now is the time to get them in and get them growing. So that's perennial, perennials, you know, plant them now. You're gonna have your best selection now. They break up, their, so there's another a group of plants I'll talk about is geraniums. So now is a good time to plant geraniums. There's a lot of different varieties that we carry. Uh, we carry the ivy geraniums, and ivy geraniums are good perennials for full sun. You can put them in the ground, you can put them in, in hanging baskets, uh, containers, but ivy geraniums are the first one I'm gonna talk about. These are more of the um, the trailing varieties. So this is more like a ground cover. So it's gonna grow more flat. You can trail out of a basket. This is a double variety. Um, ivy geraniums always have a thicker leaf and you don't run into as many insect problems but they are more of a trailing plant. So ivy, ground cover geranium, think thicker leaf, heavier and more of a trailing variety. So that's 
with um, that variety. And then you go into the zonal types. I, I brought a few zonals and ivy geraniums and zonals, they'll bloom all the way through summer. So now's the time to plant them. So this is a zonal geranium. Zonals have more of a, a thinner leaf, um, going to be more of a larger bush. So maybe two feet tall, three feet tall, four feet tall. Now with these, you got to watch out because they can get some of the caterpillars like the budworms and the ones that go after the flowers, they call them tobacco budworms. I didn't bring it out, but there's an organic spray you can use called Spinosad. So I will spray Spinosad on them. I, I don't really spray that much in my garden. If I see damage happening, I'll spray them like once a month, but I don't, in, in my garden, I don't spray a lot. You know, I really, even with aphids, I might use an organic soap. I might even just spray them off with a hose. So I, I've had an organic garden for close to 35 years, so I really don't get into spraying that much. But if I have caterpillar problems or little damage, I'll spray lightly, but I'm not a big, I'm not a big fan of really spraying heavy, but zonals are good trim them and you can see when you when you when you reach back like the stem's really long so when you deadhead this one you go all the way back and i just pinch the i i pinch the flower with my finger so all the way back get in there and pinch it so that way it will encourage it to keep on blooming and keep going up i just i just uh, lost the plant right there <laughs> one jump so <laughs> so um that was let me go get it that's another perennial that's an osteos firmum this is a good one to use um in just general landscaping because these are really hardy and they'll come back year after year so osteos um, or the freeway daisies they call them are really good um, and then there are different varieties of geraniums I didn't bring any Martha Washington Martha Washington's up but they tend to bloom more spring and then by now they're done so if you have any Martha Washington's you're growing they have more of a roughly leaf and more of a darker flower I almost start clipping them back and one thing that I do that a lot of people don't talk about when something is finished blooming, and there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be finishing too as we go closer to summer, fertilize them. So when the Martha Washington geraniums are done, feed them. Take one of the rose fertilizers, feed them because they spent all that energy building up and blooming, so now they need some food. So that's one thing. After stuff is, is done blooming, definitely feed them. And there's a lot of stuff right now that's gonna start finishing up as we go more into May, like the Martha Washington geraniums, camellias some azaleas so that's one thing with um with those those plants fertilize them fertilize them right after they're done blooming trim them light trim them clean them up and take some of the spent flowers off and then um, get them ready for going into the growing season or because when flowers are done and and most shrubs are done uh, flowering they go into the growth stages they start putting on growth so well, that's with the geranium so finish them on that plant them it's a good time to plant them right now because we're heating up um and so that one definitely plant 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 um and so i'm going to go into some of the um more of the drought tolerant perennials and i'll go into cal natives i'll talk a little bit and so um and then i'll go into the bigger stuff below like roses and some other stuff so right now is also a good time to start looking at some of the drought tolerant perennials and some of the california natives now, I guess the biggest difference with some of, like, like, because you can plant like some of the drought tolerant perennials all summer long, but now's the time to get them in the ground. Some of the Cal natives, I still do a little bit of them. Most varieties of California natives are gonna start going dormant in the summer, but we still have a few that we'll, we'll grow, because some of them do like to be planted in winter coinciding with the winter rains. But let me talk about some of the some of the drought tolerant perennials that I really like that I am um, I plant a lot. Because I really plant a lot of different plants in my garden. But I like some of like the echinaceas, like the purple cone flower. This is a good one to plant right now. Good perennial. If you have these, they go into a hard dormancy, so they're gonna start coming back, so clean them up. You can feed them lightly, not a heavy feeder, but they're gonna start coming out of their dormancy. Uh, planting the Calilophus, this is a really good plant for hot areas, even desert areas. It's related to, into the primrose family, Onithiothria, but I love this plant because you get these yellow flowers and they bloom so heavy. Um, there's purple. This is actually the Cal native that's native to parts of Baja, and um, it's called uh, Verbena de la Mina. So this is a good one to be putting in right now. Um, you have some other ones like the Helichrysum, the Ruby Clusters. This is a good uh, heat tolerant plant. Um, 
And then going into some of the Cal Natives, I don't do a lot of Cal Natives right now, but some of the ones that are blooming are really good that I'll, I'll plant right now, like the sticky monkey flowers, the Mimulus, they're great to put in right now. Um, they can get three to four feet tall, but they bloom so strong. These don't have any blooms on them, but they'll start blooming in usually about now, um, June, and then they'll go all the way through summer. Uh, the native Penstemon, um, the Penston heterophylla, this is a good one to put in right now. Uh, this will bloom long too. I've even had this in rose gardens and it just blooms. See, if you get a lot of dead dead branches off the side, I just pick them, you know, because I'm always cleaning them up. Um, and then if the flowers, these flowers are really new, but again, if, if they start finishing, I pinch them off the top. You have another good one that's called Fleabane. Is this uh, Wayne Roderick, um, the Seaside Daisy. This is a good one too. This needs a little bit more water. Uh, but another good bloomer, another good summer bloomer that you can put in right now that's a California native. And um, that's it for more of the drought tolerance and the Cal natives. Um, I think I'm going to go into the bigger stuff and then I'll, I'll go back to the herbs and um, some of the vegetables. So let's go into some of the bigger plants. Like, I don't know if you can see me. I'm going to bring the rose around. I'll, I'll bring it over here so you can see it because I only have limited room. So now's the time. This is rose season. So now's the time. Plant them and, and really find a sunny location with your roses. Six to eight hours. Full hot sun and water them in really good. Keep them good. This is a rose of the year that I really like called Princess Charlene de Monaco. So this is a really good rose. Um, with them, if you haven't fed your roses yet, definitely go through and start feeding them. Because if you, if you haven't fed them, I usually will feed them in early, like January, February. As we go into May and June, I'll fertilize them again. And one thing I like about the, um, the down to earth rose food that a lot of people don't talk about, this has Epsom salts in it. So this has a source of magnesium. Roses really like a good source of magnesium. And so, uh, that's good. So feed them now. Um, they're in their bloom cycle, so they're going to bloom all the way in through summer. And so sometimes they'll start slowing down as we go into like uh, July. But now is the time to plant them and make sure they get enough water. Um, if the soil's not so good, try to break that clay up and break that heavy soil up with a good compost, like soil building compost. Another good one is Malibu compost. So especially if your soil is really dry, blend in some Malibu about 50% or about 50 with the native and about 50% with Malibu. And this is almost more, they consider it a hybrid tea, but it's almost like a floor abundant. And when I trim this, I'll trim it right under that flower because this multi flower is four to five buds. So anytime you're, when you're pruning the floor abundance, just prune that middle flower out and the other flowers will start opening around it. With hybrid teas, I will go down about three to four sets of leaves because I want the stock to come out and be stronger. So with a hybrid tea, I would cut, I would cut more down to this fifth leaf and on an angle, so then it pushes that bud out and keeps it going straight. So that's a little bit different with like a Floribunda type or more of a hybrid tea, but now it's time to plant them. Um, if you're fighting any mildew, as we have the cooler mornings and the hot afternoons, you're gonna fight powdery mildew. My favorite is there's a product that we carry called Safer Rose 3-in-1. So that's a good one for powdery mildew. Um, it has uh, sulfur in it, and sulfur is a good fungicide for mildew and even for rust too. And so it has a little bit of soap in it, but you're gonna see mildew on the top, which is a white sort of like a like a uh, powdery film. And then you're gonna see rust under the leaves. Rust will work its way up from the ground up through the plant. So with rust, strip off the leaves and clean up the, the stems and then you can spray the rose three in one. With the mildew, it's gonna happen on the new growth. So sometimes I'll spray the new growth and just watch it because it's those hot those hot afternoons, but cool, damp mornings. So, but with roses, um, other than that, when you are planting them, I like to space them out a little farther. Sometimes I'll put roses three to four feet apart. So some of the bigger roses, I'll put three to four feet apart. Little roses, maybe two to three feet. But um, if you have any questions, just come up, uh, come in and out, ask me about it because I've planted roses for years. So that's for your roses. Good to plant right now, good um, good re-blooming. Um, and so citrus, let's talk a little bit about citrus because I grabbed, a, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna probably take some of this stuff off the table so I can set this down because some of this stuff is probably blocking and I know you guys can't see it. But um, so with citrus, now is the time to plant citrus because as we get hotter, citrus like the heat. One of the things with citrus when you plant, you can put them in the ground, you can put them in pots, you really can plant them anywhere, but Make sure they're getting full sun, six to eight hours. 
and very drain, good draining soil. And I try to keep them a little on the dry side. Don't keep them too wet. So when I like to water, I'll water on a Monday. I'll let them dry out for a few days. I might water Friday or I might wait till Monday to water again. So they don't like to be constantly wet. We have some good citrus in right now. I have Meyer lemons. I have um, some of the Mexican limes, like the key, this is the key lime. Um, and so now it's too, like I, I brought this one cause it's looking a little yellow. So uh, what I would do is I'd back off the water and I would feed it. And I like the citrus, the down earth citrus, because this has uh, trace minerals. That's really important with citrus versus other fruit trees. Citrus like zinc, magnesium, they like more and iron. They like more of those trace minerals. So that's important to really get the iron back in this and just watch the water. And so this is a nice little key line that's starting to take off. Um, Semi-dwarf, it's probably gonna get about six to 10 feet tall. So a good one. I pulled another one of my favorites. Let's see what I did with it. Oh, it's right here. Another one of my favorite um, citrus that I like, I love the Meyer lemons. So Meyer lemons are more of a sweet lemon. Um, they don't get as big. You can put this in a container. They can get six to eight feet tall at full maturity. So this is actually a natural cross between an orange and a lemon. Thin skin, juicy, and very sweet. So I love this. There's Eureka lemons. If you like more of the lemon that's more of a tart lemon, you're going to go with Eurekas. But Eurekas get bigger, like 10 to 15 feet. They're more of a tree. So with those, um, you have to put them in the ground more. In a container, they might not work as much. Um, so feeding, watering, um, insects. Always watch for some of the insects. I like to work worm castings around my plants a lot to control the white fly because worm castings have enzymes that white fly don't like. But if the white fly get really bad, I'll use like a light oil spray, like uh, Monterey makes a good one called Takedown. Uh, there's an organic soap by Safer that I like. So watch for some of the, the insects on the citrus as we go more into May. Um, and make sure with watering, like I said, water them deep, let them, like sometimes where I'm at, my soil's heavier clay, so I'm gonna water them like once every seven to 10 days. If we get a lot hotter, I might up it to maybe one more time a week. So I might go from every seven to 10 days, then I might actually go up it and I might start watering on Friday. So if we get really hot, up your water with a little a bit, a little bit but uh, make sure that it does drain and you don't keep them too wet. Um, a lot of times too, what I do is, I know a lot of people like to put them in cactus mix and mix in cactus mix. What I do is, if I'm putting them in the ground, I'll use a compost like soil building compost to break up the clay. I'll work a little bit of pumice in with them. Pumice will help the soil compact. It aerates the soil a little bit for drainage. So that's important with citrus. And um, just be patient because it, it can take up to two, three years for them to start fruiting. But now's the time to plant them. So now's the time to get all your citrus in because they like it hot. So they like it when it's in the 80s, 90s. That's when they, when they start pushing their roots and establishing their best. So that's with citrus. And so next thing um, that's going on the list, let's talk about, even though I didn't bring any of them up, I want to talk about hydrangeas. So hydrangeas, now is the time to plant hydrangeas. We're starting to get all of our hydrangeas in from Monrovia. This is a little mop head variety that's called Seaside Serenade. So the thing with, with hydrangeas, they're gonna be more of a shade perennial, two to three hours of morning sun and shade the rest of the day. Um, the most important thing with hydrangeas is they have a loose soil, the drains. You're going to feed them on a regular basis with an acid. Like I use, I use the acid fertilizer. So the azalea camellia mix fertilizer, acid mix. That's a good one. But one of the main, main thing with um, hydrangeas is when you're pruning them, a lot of the, a lot of people want to get out early in the spring and trim them. They're going to develop their flowers on the growth they produced last year. So if you got to prune them, you actually prune them in early fall. And then you um, you don't prune them in late late winter, early spring, because you're going to cut off the new growth that's going to flower. So that's the main thing with hydrangeas is don't prune them early. Prune them like way back in fall, and then they'll flush new growth. And then that new growth is what they're going to flower off the next year. So that's really important. And if you want to turn them from a, from a pink to a blue, then you will use what they call hydrangea bluing agent. So it's a good time to use it right now and use a, it's, it's a variety of sulfur, elemental sulfur. So I'll put a little bit around the plant once a month. And what that does is that brings the pH down because remember when, you're, when your soil is more higher in the pH or more alkaline, the flowers are gonna be more pink. If it's more lower on the acidity on the pH scale, like six and a half or, or even below that, 
they're going to be blue. But since we're we're a little bit more alkaline, about seven and a half, eight on our pH scale, our hydrangeas will be naturally uh, blue, but if, or uh, naturally pink, I mean. But if you want to turn them blue, use the hydrangea bluing agent. That's the sulfur that will help drop the pH down. And uh, there's a lot of different varieties that we're getting in. There's there's the giant mop heads. There's um, there's a variety called paniculata. There's uh, French uh, lace leaf types. There's so many. But that's the main thing. And and two, another thing that I'll bring up with the point is the white ones, which are like the mop head whites and the and the different types. They'll never change any different color. So that's one thing. You can take and get a, a pink variety and make it blue or with the whites, the whites are always going to stay white. So that's the main thing if you're seeing like some of the Annabelles and some of the Macrophylla, the big leaf whites, they're never going to change. They're always going to stay white. So keep the soil sort of acidic. Use an acid planting mix. If you do put them in a container, uh, keep them sheltered from the wind a little bit because they can really get beat up in the winds because their leaves are so tender. And water, water them on a regular basis. But I always, when I put them in the ground, a ton of acid mix. In a container, I'll use a really good potting soil like the uh, Blue Ribbon, but then I'll fertilize them with a good acid fertilizer. So that's a little thing that I do differently because I, I want the soil to drain really good. I know some people like to use acid mix in containers. I don't like to do it as much because it will hold a lot of water. So good drainage for nutrients and just so the, the plant's not staying too wet. So, and that's hydrangeas, but a lot of different varieties. So now's the time to plant them. May and June are you gonna find your most varieties. So come in and talk to us if you're looking for hydrangeas because now's the time. And another thing that I will point out a little bit our hydrangeas are in the back of the nursery. These are more of the outdoor hydrangeas that you're going to put in the ground and put in pots. Sometimes you'll see the florist types up front where the florist types might do good in the container but not good in the ground. So Monrovia, outdoor hydrangeas, get a plant right now, keep them fertilized. Um, not heavy feeders, but again, I'll do like a spring, I'll do like a like a mid, like an early summer and then a fall. And that's about it for the hydrangeas. Uh, but main thing, water and shade and keep them, uh, keep them growing. So that's with the hydrangeas. And I didn't bring any azaleas up, but azaleas are really the same thing. Azaleas are gonna start finishing their blooms right now. I'll light trim all the blooms off them. I'll go through and I'll feed them with an acid. Some will bloom through the summer, some will bloom in the fall, but right now with azaleas, all of your Alaskas and your, your, um, your um, what's the one I'm looking at? Like the, the red ribbons and all the other varieties. They're pretty much finishing up, so clean, clean off those old flowers, fertilize them, and get them going. And what else do we have to talk about? Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit the vegetables and the fruits, and then we'll start um, answering some of the questions. So now it's a good time. Let me come around. I have so much stuff, and I'm probably going to talk about shrubs really quick, and then we'll and vines, and we'll finish up. So let's talk about the, the uh, vegetables right now. So vegetables, what I'm looking for right now, I'm gonna put the last of my tomatoes in. So I'm gonna plant my garden tomorrow. So tomatoes, I'd like to get in before May. So get your tomatoes in right now. Don't wait any longer. So like if you're doing romas or you're doing your heirlooms, find a sunny location, plant them two to three feet apart, fertilize them good and break up that clay. Containers, just use a good potting soil and feed them once a month. But now is the time because you don't want to wait any farther into May or June because then you're going to you're going to start harvesting really late in summer. So now's the time. I brought a couple of the ones um, that I grow at home that Rogers buys from me. This is a really good heirloom. It's a, a potato leaf heirloom called Janet Jacinth Jewel. So that's a good one. There's Romas. There's um, the Cherokee Purple. I only brought a few up, but another trick that you do, always pinch off these lower leaves and plant them deep. So all these leaves I'm gonna pull off, I'm gonna plant it all the way up to there because when you bury the trunk, you're gonna get more roots out of this trunk. You're gonna help the plant get more more foliage because more roots, more roots, bigger root system, can take up more water, more nutrients. So that always helps, so plant them deep. And so um, that's with tomatoes. And if you have a problem with hornworms, use an organic spray like Bee Key uh, um, or Spinosad, that's good. I usually don't have a problem with caterpillars on my tomatoes, but I have a bird bath and the birds will come in and, and drink in the bird bath, but then they'll take care of the caterpillars too. They'll go through and pick them off. So other plants I'm doing right now, uh, peppers. Peppers are good to put in right now. Uh, feed them heavy, plant them about a foot and a half to two feet apart. Eggplant. This is one of the big eggplant. These are. This is more of the eggplant you would use for um, eggplant parmesan, black beauty. That's a good one. 
Um, you're getting into all your cucumbers, so plant your cucumbers right now. And this is a variety called Martini. Um, if you, when you get into cucumbers, the Japanese cucumbers are really the main ones that climb. So like the little Persian cucumbers, you can just let them go on the ground. Uh, watch for mildew on them. If it gets bad, I do the rose spray, the three in one. And so what else we got right here? All your zucchinis right now. So your, your regular zucchini, your patty pan scallop, the squash are good. Your butternut, your spaghetti squash, all of your, your zucchinis are good right now. Um, for melons, I wait next month. So melons and pumpkins, we'll talk about that in June. So I'm not really going through any of that right now. And so, um, so feed them, water them, make sure they're in sun. Um, and then corn, uh, corn is a good one that I'll put in right now. With corn, um, the trick to corn is heavy feeders. Sometimes you'll feed every two weeks. With corn though, to get good pollinization, you plant them in a block pattern. So 12 inches apart. Two, two in the front and two in the back, but they should be 12 inches apart, 12 inches apart, 12. So that allows the, the pollen to drop to the silks and get good uh, pollinization. So this was a white corn, I dropped the label. Oh no, it's a, it's a sweet yellow. So corn I'll do right now and they take about uh, 90 days. So your sweet corn now. Um, and so beans are another one that I plant right now. Uh, bush beans, um, pole beans, Kentucky Wonders. I do like a lot of the French filet beans, so I'm putting those in right now. Uh, those are good. So a um, lot, of, lot of vegetables right now that we're still planting, but some of the other ones wait until June. Um, and then with herbs, oh, now's the time to do herbs. So now it's all your herbs, like your parsley. I'm putting parsley in right now. That's the flat leaf Italian. Um, basil, this is a little bit of, this is like a Thai basil, planting that right now. Um, and then sweet basils, I don't think I brought much uh, sweet basil up, but now's the time to put sweet basil in. Um, now with cilantro and dill, they don't last that long, so always replant them. And sometimes they might start pruning them and harvest them, but you might only get like a month, six to eight weeks out of them, like four to six weeks. So plant them, harvest them, keep them going. Uh, your time, like your English time, if you guys do a lot of cooking, English time and French time, time to plant it. Um, oregano, like Greek oregano, Italian oregano, put it in right now. Um, I like lemon verbena, even though it can get big, I like to use that as, as a lemon, lemon flavor. Um, and then your um, African blue basil is a good basil for the pollinators. You can use this, it's more like a cinnamon basil. So definitely plant the herbs right now and keep them watered. I always like to put basil in six to eight hours of sun. Uh, not heavy feeders, might only feed them like once or twice a year, sometimes a spring and a summer, so not really heavy feeders. So um, consistency, you can put them in containers, you can put them in the ground. Another good one is just use like the Malibu pot and some of these because they do like a little bit on the regular water. So anything that I, I plant that needs regular moisture, I will go through and buy the Malibu. That will help hold a little bit more water. It's more richer potting soil. Um, so that's it with the herbs. Let's go through the strawberries really quick and then probably the vines and then we'll answer your questions because I know I'm, I'm, I'm going long on this. So strawberries, now's the time to plant strawberries. So all your ever-bearing strawberries, like Albion, Seascape, Ozark Beauty, plant them about every eight inches, six to eight inches apart. What I do that a lot of people don't talk about, when I, I love to buy the little color packs, I pick the flowers off. So see this flower cluster? I don't want it fruiting yet. So I pick that flower cluster off. Then I have a nice little plant, a nice little start. I'll loosen up the roots. I'll throw the roots to the side and then I want to plant them just like this. I don't want to bury that crown. See that new growth coming out of there? I don't want to bury that. And again, six to eight inches apart, water them good, feed them good. I like to get color packs because um, some of the, sometimes by the time you're getting the bigger ones, they're fruiting and sometimes they might not fruit again. So get the little color packs, plant them, water them. Um, for for um, insect problems, you'll get pill bugs and sometimes snails or slugs. Either use Sluggo Plus, which is a good organic slug bait, iron phosphate, or Sluggo. So two of those, I definitely use them. I sprinkle them around the plant for the strawberries. Um, and even if, if, you, if you have perennial strawberries or the plants from last year, fertilize them. A lot of times, I'll either use a cottonseed meal, which is a really good, more of acidic fertilizer, or the one I like for tomatoes and for a lot of the vegetables, I like the all-purpose. I use this on everything and it works great. Like I use it on multiple plants. So definitely get those going, water them good. Um, they don't get a lot of insects, but you do have to watch for snails, slugs, and pill bugs. So that's with the strawberries. 
Um, going through some of the um, the evergreens. Let me put this one up here. So shifting into the evergreens. Now's the time if they start getting, if you want to keep a lot of your evergreens a little smaller, now's the time to trim them. I don't like to trim them as much going through summer, but if I want to try to retain their height, I know a lot of people like to go in fall, but sometimes I do like to go sort of a mid-spring and just light shape them. So this is a golf ball pitosporum, even the silver sheens. I don't like to hard prune. And so light pruning some of the evergreens, uh, not heavy feeders. Uh, a lot of times I'll use like an all purpose and that, that usually takes care of them. But usually with some of the plants that aren't really heavy feeders, I'll just go through like two to three times a year. I might do a spring and summer and a fall, or I might just do spring, summer. So it just depends on what you're doing, but that's with the evergreens. Um, make sure they get watered, but not over watered. That's important for them. Um, so that's basic on the evergreens. Keep them going, keep them healthy, and make sure you're not over watering them. That's a, a key thing. Insect problems, you might have aphids on them. Um, use like an organic safer soap. That's a good one. And so that's with evergreens. Um, Going to go through the vines a little uh, quick. So now's a good time. We're starting to get out of the spring blooming vines. So the jasmines are finishing, the happy wander vines are finishing. Now you're going to go into the summer stuff. So now is a good time to start putting in your clematis. So clematis are a good one right now. So we're getting on a lot of different varieties of clematis, which is right. This variety is uh, Boulevard uh, Nubia, which is more like a pinky red variety. This is a good one to plant right now. All your mandevias. So like your crimson paracels, these are good to plant right now. I think I grabbed a white one. Here's a white one. Let me take this one down. And the main thing with these, you wanna have a little trellis that's about six to eight feet tall and plant them at the bottom and let them climb it. These have tendrils, they'll climb on their own. These can take a little bit of shade, full sun, so they can take three or four hours of sun to all day sun, so they can vary. With Clematis, um, Clematis likes a lot of sun. If you're really hot where you're at, put it in a little bit of shade, but it does like the sun though. That's where it's gonna bloom the best, and just regular water on all these. These sometimes a little bit moderate, not too wet. Uh, fertilizing would just, I, I always feed with a rose fertilizer. With feeding these, all purpose, I do the rose fertilizer, that's one thing with the vines. You can still keep on doing your star jasmines. Now jasmines are gonna be finishing up probably as we get closer to June, but they're a great evergreen that you can be planting right now. And so that's about all I have to talk about. Um, and if you guys have any questions, let's go to the questions now. Uh, one question, is it bad then to plant citrus near apple trees? Well, um, she's asking, is it bad to plant um, citrus next to apple trees? I guess the one thing you have to watch with that is, apples need a lot of water. So when you go into all, any of your stone fruits, like your peaches, your plums, your apples, your nectarines, they need a lot of water. Where citrus want a little bit more moderate water. So you can, you can plant them in the same area, but just remember, the citrus don't like to be watered as frequently, where apples sometimes, even in the summer, you might be watering them two, two, two to three times a week. So that would be the biggest thing is uh, regulate the water. Moderate with the citrus and the avocados, and then more water with the uh, peaches, plums, and apples. So that would be the main concern I would watch for, but you can still plant them in the same area, but sometimes, I won't, I'll put the, the apples and those on irrigation. And sometimes the citrus I'll hand water once, once or twice a week. So, yeah. All right, what can I feed my plumerias for flowering? Um, plumerias, so when you, when she's asking what to feed with plumerias. So plumerias, I'm always looking for a tropical food. If I can't find, cause, cause anything that tropical likes what they call a high, low, high. Now, if I can't, one thing I do a lot, and I used to do this when I had a lot of plumerias, if I can't find plumeria food, which is more of a tropical food, I'll use citrus, I'll use a citrus. Because the reason why I'll use a citrus, and a lot of people think I'm probably crazy on this, <laughs> but um, it's more of the minerals too. So I have some nitrogen, I got 6% nitrogen, three phosphorus, and three potassium. And I'm liking the iron, the zinc, and the magnesium. So that's important, trace minerals. Even though the phosphorus is really low, um, I still find that, that plumerias like a little higher phosphorus, but if you have at least three to 6%, that's more than enough. All right, one more. So yeah, yeah. clematis, it can grow in our area? Yeah, it can, it can. So clematis will grow in our area. Um, sometimes it can be sort of tricky because they are a tender vine. I always will plant them, sometimes I'll plant them in an area that gets more like half day sun to half day shade, but I've, I've planted a lot of them. 
I guess the trick too is when when um when you go into fall, they'll go dormant. And some you cut back early and some you cut back late. But what I do is I just let them flush their their uh, their canes out and I'll only trim back the dead canes. Sort of like what I would do with raspberry or blackberry in this climate. Okay. Um, and then is rosemary also a good herb to be planting right yeah. now? Yeah, rosemary is a good one. I didn't talk about rosemary, but rosemary is a good one. So if you're cooking with rosemary, you're going to do more of the upright varieties. Like Tuscan Blue, um, Spice Island. Uh, barbecue, those are the cooking ones. There's trailing ones that are more ornamental, like Huntington Carpet and Prostrate. And there's so many mixtures. There's uh, dwarf varieties called ARP. And so there's so many, but always come in. But definitely with the cooking ones, upright, and with the ornamental ones, just for trailing and for, uh, you know, just in the landscape, in the garden. Okay, are we done? Yeah. Okay, thank you. This is David Rizzo from Rogers Gardens, and thank you for joining me today. And if you guys have any questions, just come in and talk to us. Okay, you guys have a happy weekend. Bye. Nice. I'm going to go pass out. Nice. I learned a lot. That was a very, very informative. No. I sort of, you know what's funny is. I took it all. I mean. I don't really follow their their guidelines. I just. Yeah, do this, this, and all that stuff. Yeah, like, no, but, and it's very, like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm paying attention to it. Some yeah. people, like, zone out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it's a lot. It's a lot of material. I mean, you have to cover so much. It's a lot. It's a little amount of time. I know. Like, they should probably, I feel like they should probably separate it a lot. So that's why I try to go through stuff quick, and then if you guys have questions, come in and talk to me. But yeah. I try to cover a little bit, but certain people like to have certain subjects longer, and I just, I'm not going to talk about roses for 20 minutes, you know.